My name is Bunny Imogen Smith, and I am a transgender female. I always knew, I think most people do, you know, being transgender isn't the choice that's made. The choice is being willing to embrace it. Here today, doing what I'm doing if it wasn't for absolutely every single one of you, for just being so amazing. There are so many people in this world. Always just be like, on my shoulder to cry on, and you'll always just be there. And yeah so little seem to actually be educated on what it means to be transgender. Hi everyone, so this video is really important to me um, and it's actually taken me quite a while to film it because I wanted to make sure that all of my close friends and family were okay and on board with everything that was going on before I actually posted about it on Facebook. I am transgender. So for those of you who don't know what that means, it basically means that I do not identify with the gender that was assigned to me up there. I'm going to open a YouTube channel in a few months and kind of vlog my journey and hopefully I will be able to educate people and yeah, I'm hoping that this is going to be a really positive experience and I hope that you join me on it. So thank you so much. If I can enlighten at least one other person, I've done my job. The issue with social media that I have found firsthand is that it can be so easy to just use it as a mask. Mask your problems, mask your emotions. It's a virtual reality, not reality reality. At some point, we need to deal with the problems that we face as humans head on. This is a little like a diary. This is a new leaf for me. It's nerve wracking. I'm ready to be authentic. And I hope you guys see another side of me, a side of me that I've never really shown before, that I'm ready to show now. <clears throat> My name is Bunny Imogen Smith, and I am a transgender female. This is kind of like a diary. I've been involved with social media and kind of being public, not to like a large extent, but to an extent. Um, <clears throat> for about a year now, but I've never really opened up fully about my life. I think it's so easy to like, just say, she's a transgender YouTuber, like talking about her experiences, that's cool. And yes, it is cool. You know, like I'm glad that I have this opportunity to talk about this stuff. But it's not about where I am right now. Not for this part anyway. This part of Behind the Bombshell is to dive deep into my past and really talk about 
What made me me? So I was born on July 14th, 1998. So I'm a cancer. <laughs> so for me, growing up, I'd say this is below the age of 10, okay? I, um, I had gender dysphoria. So I truly believed that I was a female. You know, um, I was this little boy walking around thinking, you know, I had short hair, but I was always doing this and this, you know? I had this vision in my head. When I looked in the mirror, I saw a female. I saw a girl. Um, I would always wear my friend's clothes. I would wear my mum's heels. Her click clacks, as I would call them, because they made them little noises as I stomped around in them. My childhood was actually a very happy one. I think that's because my parents and my family latched on very quickly that I was different. And they kind of just like went along with it, you know? I think one of my most asked questions on social media is how did I tell my parents? You didn't really have to. You. It wasn't so. I, it wasn't yeah. like other people. I don't think where like they had to go down and be like, like mum, dad, like I think I'm trans. I think I. Just, my parents knew that I wanted to be female before I even knew what being trans was. We knew from. I think it was the age of eight. You started to write in a little diary, mm. and you showed it to me. And you'd written things like, "I'm trapped in the wrong body. Why am I this way? What's happening to me?" Mm. Um, you were very confused. Um, I never, you didn't really ever say to me, by the way, I'm trans. That was how it all came about. You just discussed it through the diary. And then we sat down and said that it's, there's nothing wrong with that. It happens. And that we would look into how we go about getting information, speaking to the right people to give you the, the love, the help and the support that you needed, really. Mm. It wasn't a big... By the way, Mum and Dad, I'm transgender. It was just, um... I remember being with, like, Charlotte and Emily or whatever. I'd always put on Charlotte's, like, little denim skirts and stuff. And yeah. we'd go out and I, whenever Where we played... Where my click clacks? Your click clacks. <laughs> Mum's heels, heels were called click clacks. <laughs> and I'd always, you know, whenever we'd role play in situations like where we were playing together and we were pretending that we were in, like, Big Brother or something, yeah. like what we just used to do, I was always a female character. And so... I think, I remember Thomas always used to say to me before I went to John Paul, which was my first school, he said to me, I'm so worried about you because high school is going to be horrible for you. Mm. He was like, you're going to get bullied so badly. But at the time, I was like, no, I won't because I didn't actually understand. Like, as far as I knew, I was just like, hey, like, this is ordinary, like. Emily, is it really weird how I'm upstairs and you can hear me, like, in your ear? So that's probably a good first question, actually. What should I call you today? Bonnie. If, like, on camera, Bonnie, if you do. And then if it's not, then I don't care. Because I'll, like, respond to anything, hopefully. And, so, pro and pronouns? I mean, I don't know really because my grandma calls me she, and so do my friends. But then mum and dad sometimes call me he, she. Like they just get confused sometimes. So it's like, I don't know. Why do you wear all the makeup? What's it all about? Um, I think I started to experiment with it when I was like in year nine, ten, and I think that was just like the foundation or whatever. But I think it's just, it's kind of like the art of it. I think because I like doing 
my art and stuff. It was just kind of a way of being able to paint Bonnie but on to me. So just like a disguise, really. I feel like so much more confident, etc. Um, a lot of people generally say like you don't need it or whatever, or who are you trying to impress? And it's not really about impressing anyone, it's more just, I don't know. It's just like a part of my clothing, really, I think. I tend to use the mirror out there, so I can get closer up. And then, because it's not like a lace front wig, I tend to have to blend it in with my actual hair. So I dye my hair black quite regularly, but it's kind of faded. But I just try and get my real middle part to kind of line up with where that's going, and it tends to be okay. When you put the wig on, how does it make you feel when you then look in the mirror? Um, I think if I put it on and it looks realistic or it looks like it blends in, it definitely makes me see myself a lot differently. It makes me just feel like I've transformed. It brings a lot of femininity, I think, to my face. And just to like, my figure, I think, it tends to just bring it all together. Um, I don't know, it makes just me feel a lot more confident. But I think because I've never had long hair before, and I've only just regu like started regularly wearing it, it does feel quite weird. It feels like I'm wearing a hat, like, all the time. Um, and I also do, like, tend to just play with it a lot when in conversation or whatever. And people, like, stop playing with it, so... It does become, like, a bit of a, an annoying habit, but... I guess it's just, like, all... Just getting used to it, really. Does it make you feel more like Bonnie? Um... I wouldn't say it makes me feel more like Bonnie because I see myself as Bonnie anyway, like no matter if I've got makeup on or whatever, that's like how I identify myself as like just a name. But I think it definitely makes me feel like a lot more in touch with my feminine side. It definitely just, like I said, helps me feel like I've transformed. And I know um, when I tend to go out, if like me and my friends go to like a restaurant or whatever, there have been like more occasions than not where I am mistaken for it and a lot of like you know the waiters will refer to me in like the she her pronouns etc so I think what comes along with wearing it is what makes me feel better you don't have to answer any question I ask Bowie who is who is sort of um what is the name Bonnie and what who is Bonnie sort of who has Bonnie been to you I suppose um well, I guess I definitely, I created Bonnie as like an online character at first. Um, I had quite a few friends who I've met along the way who, you know, live in like America or whatever. Some really close people who I consider family. Um, and obviously when you sign up, you need a name. And I found Bonnie and I don't think I committed to it as much when I first did it. It was just like a name, like whatever. Um, but then over the years, I just started to realise that actually who I was like online, like I can't stay online forever and I need to do something about it. So I was like, I might as well just bring Bonnie because she is basically me, but to life. So that's when I started experiment experimenting with makeup and I started to try and just make myself look a bit more like how she looks. Um, I feel like Bonnie is just me. That's just her kind of thing. And a lot of my friends in America are kind of in the exact same position. So, got a friend who I really only know is Madison. So we've all kind of gone through this journey together, and so. My plan was to have like a bit of a naming ceremony towards like the end of December maybe. Um, just with like friends, maybe like a few family members or whatever, just to kind of celebrate Josh. You say people are practicing, it feels like people are practicing. Yeah, I think people kind of got into the habit of just saying it anyway so that by the time January came they wouldn't mess up either. 
So at the moment it's not really annoying you if it's... Right now, I don't care. Like, either way, I'll just respond to it just because I'm like, I get how hard it is for people. But I think I just actually told people that I was going to stop responding to Josh, I think back in like July, June. Do you feel now sort of emotionally ready to go out into the world and present yourself as Bonnie every day? Because I know it's like a big step. It's, it's, this is a, not a decision you've made lightly, is it? No, um, I think... I definitely think I'm ready, but I think even if I'm not, I just kind of say to myself, look, you're never going to be fully ready, so just do it. And I just kind of like shove myself out there, like, and see what happens. And it, you know, it tends to go okay. I tend to get like good responses. And if I don't, then I like, I just don't really care too, too much about people who have negative things to say. I'm not just doing YouTube videos to kind of like become popular or whatever, I'm doing it more for my own sake because I think when I'm forcing myself out there like in front of everyone and people are like, you know, responding to it or whatever, it's basically just like that second confidence. Um, and I think to me it's like, well, everyone knows now, so there's no going back kind of thing. And that helps a lot because I always second guess myself like some way or another. I always think, am I doing the right thing, or whatever. This is the brow. Hi everybody. Hello. I told you to come meet all the Josh's friends. <laughs> you said Josh is Josh, I don't think that Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I keep doing it to I did it to you a second ago anyway. Keep on going. Keep on going. My brother's is Oh. There is a one person who never messes up. Yeah, as far are. as I know. Yeah, I am actually. Apart from the one time in Frankie's, but that was it. Which from he sheer to the way No. No. Yeah. I went to say he, but then I realised. And you know when you change halfway through, then I went he she, and then we were kind of just like, oh my god. And it makes it sound worse. Why and it was just yeah. Like, yeah. Especially when it's a way to the night, so we kept going peacefully to my day. He's because I had like my wig on and everything, so he's close to me, and then he comes over and he's like. Are you ladies finished? And she goes, I am. I don't think he, she is. And I was like, okay. Thank you so much, Zoe. Zoe's my personal hairstylist. <laughs> You're my personal hairstylist. Yeah. So, my hairstylist. You don't need someone for the outfit, though. You've got that under control, right? Got that under control. These are all friends from school, and you talk to them. Yeah. You're, you're missing them. Yeah, definitely. It's really hard. Thank you. What's going on? Why is it happening? Are you calling Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 That is yeah, so cute! Yeah. Well, I've got to do it. I know this is from today. Yeah, I know. Marnie and Spencer are just... You've got to do a really loud whistle. I am getting emotional. She's filled the job. It's not like you lot to be so quiet. 
So, and the only person speaking is Bonnie, which uh, which isn't a surprise. So, um, so Julia started planning this uh, a few weeks ago, and and she did say to me, um, "Will you say a few words?" And Julia has a kind of form of dyslexia that when she says "Will you," it really means you will say a uh, say a few words. So, um, so. You know, I put hours and hours and hours of preparation into what I'm going to say, which started at about three o'clock this afternoon, thinking about it. I was going to bring a whiteboard um, and, and do some kind of whiteboard moments just to uh, wind Bonnie up completely. Uh, I also did think about doing a PowerPoint presentation, but I um, thought that would go down really, really well. So um, first things first, before I say anything, uh, about Bonnie, there are a few thank yous that I need to say. Um, firstly, thank you to everybody for coming. Uh, it's really, really appreciated. Um, you know, friends, uh, friends of ours, friends of Bonnie's, friends of all of us, really. So uh, we really appreciate you uh, you coming and taking time out to, to come and celebrate this with us. Uh, but there is one person that I really do need to not say a joking thank you, but a really big thank you to, um, which is uh, which is Zoe. For, uh, for organising everything, so there you go, don't start crying, if you are going to cry, um, use it to water the flowers, so, um, so thank you ever such a lot for, uh, for organising everything, um, and um, you need to put them in water, okay, you don't plant them, alright, okay, so they just go in a vase, okay, not in a pot in the garden, alright. Um, so that's all my thank yous, I think. That's everything out of the way. Um, so, why are we here? Um, I couldn't really think what this is all about tonight. It's a, um, so, and then I, I was watching television the other night and there was something on about, um, about name days. And, it, and so I looked up name days and I thought, well, what's a name day? And it, apparently, in a lot of kind of Catholic countries and stuff, it's, uh, it's quite popular um, for, uh, for, for people to have a name day. And it's based around their patron saint or, or their family saint. So it kind of got me thinking, if Bonnie had a saint, what would it be? So I thought, well, she likes shopping. So it could be potentially be St. Michael, the patron saint of Marks and Spencers. Um, but no, it probably wouldn't be uh, because she wouldn't really be seen dead in Marks and Spencers. Um, she likes playing video games, so it could possibly be Saints Row, which was uh, used to one of her favourites from uh, from a few years ago. Um, but then I finally decided that uh, it wouldn't be any of those. Um, for somebody that is so obsessed with appearance, uh, the way that uh, the way that she looks, um, the celebrity lifestyle, um, <laughs> that it would that it would have to, uh, and also because it's uh, it's a saint that has given his or her saint's name to a fake tan, it would probably have to be Saint Tropez, which is a kind of, which is a little bit of a play on words, which hopefully um, you will forgive me. Um, but it was the only one that when I actually went through a list of patron saints that actually seemed to make any kind of sense for, uh, for Bonnie. So um, I did think that actually I'd, I'd be able to avoid having to do any kind of like father of the, uh, of the bride speeches, but you've kind of seen to that 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 would probably have to happen at some point in the future. So this is the dress rehearsal for how bad your fa my father of the bride speech is going to be. Um, so that's enough kind of talking. They'll probably be bringing out the food in a minute. Um, obviously, we just wanted to say, you know, from all of us here and, you know, from me and from mum and from Thomas and from all your friends and all your family, how proud we are um, and how, how much we love you and how amazing we think you've done on this journey so far and we just really look forward to all the uh, all the future and everything else that's uh, that's come in and whatever that might bring um, we got a couple of bits and pieces for you nothing major If everybody could just join us in, um, in, in just uh, raising a toast to uh, to our new member of the family, um, to to Bonnie. Oh, to, to Bonnie. To Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> to Bonnie. To Bonnie. To Bonnie. To Bonnie. <laughs> 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 to Bonnie. To Bonnie. To Bonnie.
So, thank you. Do you know why I chose the name Bonnie Imogen Smith? Do you know like the meaning between both names? No. You don't? No, I don't know. I don't think I do. Well, we were watching Vampire Diaries at the time. We were. And I fell in love with the name Bonnie because of Bonnie Bennett, who was a witch on the show. And I don't know, I just loved the ring of it. I loved how cute and sweet it was. So I just went with that. And then Imogen was actually because I have a cousin named Amy. Who's lovely. Who is lovely. <laughs> and I always used to look up to her. I remember we went on a holiday to France with them. <laughs> and I don't know, she was always such like a role model for me in yeah, terms of just how pure she was yeah. um and i don't know like i just she used to be like the um idea of like beauty to me like she was just so beautiful she still is she, well yeah no she, she still is <laughs> she still exists but i'm just saying like she was always um just i loved her so much and so that was kind of like tribute to her mm -hmm. i think so that's how i came up with the name bonnie Mitch and smith I kind of felt like a Russian doll, you know, you open it up and there's somebody else inside. I was Bonnie, like, and it was confusing because Bonnie was unidentified at the time, but I was stuck inside this other body of this person that I didn't know. It's like you look down at yourself and... Have you ever had one of those dreams where you wake up and you're somebody else? It was a little like that, but who you were is a completely different sex to you. And along with that are the stereotypes and the boxes that you get put into as a young boy. You know, you play with the fire trucks and you like blue and you play football with the boys at school. But that's not what I wanted ever. Dolls were really my escape when I was young. Truly, it wasn't until I got older that life started throwing at me things that were going to change me as a person forever. The way that I have filmed, like, these episodes, um, you know, I've filmed footage in different sittings. So one day I'll sit down with a specific topic to talk about and, you know, um, just so that I don't get mixed up and so that I feel like I can deliver it all in the right way. This part of like this episode I've actually left until last to film because it's scary like it's when it comes to my life I kind of own everything that I do and everything that happens to me and take it as a lesson, move on. And I talk about it, you know, like as you've seen. I'm pretty much an open book, but this is the one thing that I find it hard to talk about to my closest friends, let alone to the entire internet. And it's actually a big part of this process for me has been deciding whether or not I actually do want to talk about it. I've talked to family members because not everyone in my family even knows about this. Not, every, not everyone in my life knows about this because it's so personal. But I kind of hope Like I said, if I can help one person, 
them, that means a lot to me. And I decided to do this to kind of let people in to my life, see a little bit about my life and some of the things that have happened. And I think that this was such a large stepping stone. This was a game changer for me. Um, Just in terms of, you know, it really changed the way I saw myself, the way I saw other people. It was one of the hardest points in my life. I think for legal and personal reasons, I'm not going to go into all of the details to the following subject because it's still a lot for me to handle. Um, So I'm going to touch on it. I'm going to kind of go along the surface. I'm going to kind of state certain situations, but I'm not going to be too specific just because for my own safety, really. Um, When I was 16 years old, I was raped. And... I got involved with someone that I shouldn't have. Um, And that was the outcome. And it changed me. I kind of went through this stage first off of believing that I deserved it, that I had almost asked for it, you know, I was kind of victim shaming myself. And it took me about a year through talking to my therapist to decide that well to come to the realization that this wasn't my fault and that I didn't ask for this and you know it was very violent I kept it to myself for the longest time didn't come out to it about, about to my parents until late last year. I was so like scared of what everyone's opinions would be. I was so scared of what people would think, what people would say, and that it would change the way that people looked at me. Like they would look at me like I was this helpless little rabbit when that's not the case. Like, yes, it's sad. But hey. I'm still here. It changed the way I felt about relationships. Um, It felt the way I looked at you know, like sex. I all of a sudden, you know, if I met somebody and, you know, it was going to lead somewhere, the second 
it became like even more than a kiss, I would just shut down. Like I couldn't do it. Like it was just so, you know, I don't even know how to explain it. Like I would just start shivering. I would just start like freaking out. Then I started having nightmares. And then I started having like night terrors, such as like sleep paralysis type situations. Um, and I still do, like up until now, like I still do. It's still a current situation that I'm trying to deal with. I'm still trying to heal. Making sure that my top is actually <laughs> um, So, like a few days ago, I was thinking, do I actually do a speech or not? And then I thought, okay, yes. Do I write a speech? No. Because I just felt like it would be really artificial. But then my counter argument to that would be, I like, I don't know, know about five words of the dictionary, so this is gonna be like a really just drab speech. But basically, um, I just wanna like Dad did, thank absolutely everyone for being here. Um, I really wanna just thank my friends so, so much. We were actually talking about it earlier, but when I moved to Tuxta, um, it was really scary. I'd moved around to loads of schools before. I didn't feel accepted by anyone. And a few days into Thomas Elaine's, I just broke down. And Zoe <laughs> came over she to see if I was all right and asked me if I wanted to, you know, go and sit with them at lunch or whatever. And throughout all of the years to come, all of them individually have just given me so much confidence. And I would not be stood here today doing what I'm doing if it wasn't for absolutely every single one of you for just being so amazing. Um, I also just really want to thank Thomas, like, <laughs> so much because I just, like, know how much, like, how hard it could have been to have a younger, like, brother at the time going through all of that and just how, like, weird it may have seemed but you've honestly just been like one of the most supportive people ever and you've just just made me feel like I can just really do this and then also thank you to mom who is more of like a best friend and I know that like anything that I tell you I can do with you there because you will always just be like on my shoulder to cry on and you're always just be there, tidying up everything <laughs> And then, just lastly, Dad, because not only did you just give a really sarcastic, hilarious speech, like the war, but it also just meant so much because there are so many people out there in my position whose parents would not want anything to do with them for them just wanting to like transition or just in any aspect. So our parents would want nothing to do with them for it. But I was blessed with a pair of parents who would not leave my side no matter what I did wrong. So I'm just really blessed and honored for that. So yeah, let's eat because I'm like really hungry. <laughs> but yeah, thank you everyone for coming. So. Not even there. <laughs> no, it's fine. Six pounds, however, month for makeup. I'm so morbid and so cryptic, but like I just like to hope that Josh kind of found peace. Yeah. 
to which I know sounds like really bad and sometimes I do feel guilty you know like I took away my parents son almost but it was like it got to the point where it was like I felt that the way I was going I wasn't going to be able to make anybody happy around me like you know not if you're not being authentic you can't like I know this sounds really weird but like RuPaul says how the hell are you gonna love somebody else if you can't love yourself that is so true because it's like how was I ever going to move forward and have a life how was I supposed to get married how was I supposed to like love my future children if I couldn't love myself mm. and no, so, it's like how you say you and Josh discussed it and Josh gave in and was happy to let Bonnie come through take over and live her life <clears throat> but I couldn't have done it without you <laughs> <laughs> this woman is my rock. Yeah. She's so special and amazing. Yeah. Just got to learn to love myself too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, girl. <laughs> I actually have a question. Oh, God. Right, okay. Which I haven't told her before, like, I haven't prepared for her. Okay. Mm -hmm. What would you say to any parents? that are watching this, whose kids may be dealing with their gender, a bit confused, what would you maybe say to them? Or maybe if that's too much for you, what would you say to younger kids? Because obviously, as you know, the demographic of my videos tend to be younger members of the mm -hmm. LGBT community, a lot of which are confused in their gender. A few who I know personally who are, well, trans, but their parents don't obviously agree. And so that kind of stumps their ability to move forward with their transition. <laughs> All you can do, and I, I know I'm going to get emotional now, it's not been an easy journey. Um, <sighs> giving birth to a boy. It's almost like a bereavement. I had to say goodbye to Josh. But it's not about me. It's not about me. It's not about Dad. It's about the child. It's it's not a rehearsal. You only have one life. And they have to be happy. Um, my kids are my world. Um, they're my joy. They're my sadness. They're my life. Um, and I would do anything for either of them. It hasn't been easy, but it's not been as hard as I thought it would be either, because she's been so strong. But I know that she's been strong because we've been so strong. So there's no point in trying to fight it. There's no point in trying to, to change them. They, they are who they are. And if you just let them be what they want to be, there's a fantastic, great person in there who wants to just live their life and love life and as a parent you have to encourage that and you have no right to stop that mm. that's all i can that's all i can say that's the only advice i can give so you just need to let them follow their dreams i am so proud of bonnie and there are times when i miss josh but I love Bonnie more, and she's my best friend, and she's my daughter.